we have always struggled with distributed systems and microservices. When there is an issue and you need to resume your services back to normal, we hit into a lot of problems and that's when we realize some of these patterns and strategies helps us a lot. In this video, we are going to look at one particular strategy which is called as exponential backoff. This term is not new to the industry. However, we just generally don't use this term to define this particular strategy. As always, in this video, we are going to look at what is exponential backoff, when to use exponential backoff. We are going to use our typical style case study using Zerodha trading application. If you are a fan of Zerodha, just drop a note in the comment section below. I have used Zerodha how they would have designed their system and how we can make it better by applying exponential backoff in their system design. I also have explained the pros and cons of the strategy. Finally, we will just summarize and then close off the video. Let's get started. So what is exponential backoff? Exponential backoff at a high level is an algorithm which uses feedbacks to decrease the rate at which we call some process. To explain it in simpler terms, let's take an example of application 1 and application 2. So I'm calling application 2 from the application 1 and I'm doing this multiple times and then I realize that my second call and the third calls are failing. So the first time when I called it was successful. However, my subsequent calls are failing. Now what happens from the client perspective is irrespective of whether I succeeded in getting my response, I always called the application 2. So all my calls are routed to the application 2 without understanding any context on what happened to my previous calls. Now this adds burden to the application 2 because it might be trying to recover from some failures and then we might be adding more load to the application 2. So this is where exponential backoff comes in. Imagine a case where the same application 1 and application 2 connections are failing and the client is now aware of the failure and we are going to trigger the next call after 2 seconds. So imagine that the first call fails from application 1 to application 2. We wait for 2 seconds before triggering the subsequent calls. Now imagine the second call again fails. So what do we do? We exponentially wait. So what do I mean by exponentially here is we double the number of wait time. So earlier we waited for 2 seconds. Now for the third call I will wait for 4 seconds. Now again for the fourth call I will wait for 8 seconds. This is why this particular strategy is called as exponential back off. So I am backing off from calling my subsequent service which had a failure but I'm going to back off exponentially. So that way I will try to reduce the number of calls I'm making to my service which was having failures. This particular strategy benefits the server. However, it needs to be implemented by the client. So that's why it is slightly complicated and not many people know or use it or enforce it. So when should I use this particular type of strategy? We need to use the exponential back off when we need to reduce the number of calls to a failing service to reduce the load on that particular server which is recovering. There could be a recovering server which has a fleet of let's say 50 servers and you're adding more and more load into the system so that the recovering services might still again go down. right? So in that case this particular strategy will be very helpful. Also in case of microservices we use it predominantly in the circuit breaking pattern. This will help reduce the fault tolerance from the application side as well and it will try to reduce the number of calls to the destination service. Finally it is also used in network collisions. So to avoid network collisions for example client A calling client B and client B calling client A and they generally talk in a single channel right. If you are talking about a distributed network connection let's say they are all connected in the same network channel then there could be collisions where client A and client B are connected in the same channel and they are talking to each other there could be collisions. So that is where exponential back off can help if a failure gets detected you wait for some time exponentially so that we can reduce the number of load on the destination service. Now let's understand this by looking at a real time example. So Zerodha if you don't know it's a trading application in India something similar to Robinhood in the United States. Using this application you can go buy stocks, sell stocks, look at historical data, uh, subscribe to their APIs, get some real time trading information. There are WebSocket APIs and historical APIs and whatnot. So I'm going to use that particular platform. So imagine that I have the mobile application 
which is called as Kite for Zeroda. So Zeroda is the platform and the mobile application for interacting with it is called Kite. So that's what I have mentioned here. We generally use the username and to password to generate a token. An access token gets generated using the authentication service within Zeroda. We use that access token to connect to their API gateway, which internally connects and verifies that particular token. And it also allows us to connect to the execution service, which connects to the exchange. So here I have just mentioned NSE, National Stock Exchange, which has internally matching engine. Let's not go into the complexities, but at a high level, we connect to the API gateway that connects to the trade executor, which connects to the matching engine. We also have different APIs provided by Zeroda. It also has WebSocket API, historical API, which connects to historical database, and then we can use that as well. Now, since all these connections are via APIs, you can also use the same access token to connect via APIs. Sometimes clients or users, what they do is they connect that to an application and then they try to bombard the API gateway with more messages. So imagine that there are more requests going to the API gateway. Now, Zeroda identifies that, okay, there are more connections coming in. So there could be issues with connecting the historical API because historical API restricts you from doing maybe like two calls per minute or three calls per minute, etc. Right. So this is where the rate limiting comes into picture. So we can add exponential back off from the API gateway to connecting to the historical API for specific clients using which we can limit our API calls so that we don't bombard the system and then take that system down. It creates a noisy neighbor problem and it brings the whole system down. In order to reduce that, we add rate limiters into the system, right? So this is where we can add exponential back off so that the client application knows that okay for this particular client i already did my request one minute ago i cannot do my subsequent historical trade api request until i complete five minutes of the whole cycle right so that is one way of protecting the system and bringing down the whole system down this is one example of how you can use exponential back off the next one is let's imagine i'm adding funds into my account so there is an option called add funds and i'm using a upi service as you all know most of us uh, no, if you are from India, we use the NPCI, which is the National Payments Corporation for integrating our uh, unified platform interface, right? I mean, this is called UPI. We have a unique identifier for individual phone numbers and we can add money from our bank account, which is linked from the payments engine and we can get money back. Imagine that that particular service is down, right? We are trying to add money from our bank account into the Zeroda wallet. And we identified that, okay, some service is going down. Now, what happens is Zerada identifies that, okay, there are more subsequent failures which are happening for the same uh, UPI service. So they immediately want to reduce the number of failure calls. So they have added an exponential back off so that users can see notification in the app saying that the UPI gateway is experiencing failures. So please don't use API gateway. And subsequently, UPI also blocks the UPI request from the UI itself. To reduce the number of failure calls to the backends this is one way of adding exponential back off and saving or securing your backends from issues now how do we recover so zerada obviously allows once in a time request or to get the systems back after a particular cool off period is over we allow one particular request to pass through the upi service and if that particular request again fails we again go into the same cycle of backing off exponentially if that particular request succeeds, then everything is succeeded. All the subsequent requests will be allowed. Now, again, if there is a failure, the same cycle repeats again and again. This is how you can add exponential back off in any type of system, which is very critical. And you want to reduce the number of calls to the destination service. Now, let's look at the pros and cons. I think you would have already got to know the pros and cons from this example, but let's just discuss for the sake of it. The first thing which we get from the pros is the fail fast scenario so if one particular request fails for that particular client we know that subsequent requests are going to fail so we can fail fast our api request so we know that the back off time is two seconds all the api requests which are going to come within that two seconds will be directly failed instead of directly calling that service and then waiting or timing out right generally what happens is systems api calls timeout so we fail fast by using these back off times we also want to reduce the unnecessary load on the destination server. So that's a big pro because when a system is recovering, we don't want to add unnecessary load and bring that server down while it is coming up. 
Also, this helps in limiting the API calls based on the server API specification so that we don't add unnecessary load to the server to detect our rate limiting limits, etc. The cons are over a period of time, the exponential time increases to minutes. So we need to be very careful in defining the exponential back of acceptable time or the rate at which we want to retry back again. So for example, we say that after 100 retries, 100 exponential failures, I will just try that back again. So the counter might be reset to zero again, right? So we need to make a finite or acceptable rate at which we can retry. Otherwise, the systems will become very slow. Also, this needs to be handled at the client side. So the server side cannot implement it. This client side has to implement it. So most of the time, clients don't add these kind of validations unless the client in itself is designed by the system. For example, in the case of uh, Zero, the I just mentioned, in some cases, the mobile app can be designed to have exponential back off. But if people are using the APIs directly, we cannot have those at the API um, uh, client side, right? I mean, obviously the client has to implement it. So we will have rate limiting on the server side to reduce the failures and the interactions. Just to summarize what we just discussed in this particular video, we understood what is exponential back off. Exponential back off is an algorithm which is used to get feedback and decrease the rate of calls if there is a failure for a particular service. These calls are continued until we reach a particular acceptable rate or a limit so that we can continue processing request or API calls. We saw when to use exponential back off. We also saw how to use back exponential back off within a trading system like Zeroda. I showed different examples on rate limits and also using failure uh, calls, failure rates at which we connect to third party APIs. Uh, we saw both of those examples. Finally, we just discussed the pros and cons of exponential back off. I hope you found this particular video interesting. If you did, do drop me a note so that I will be happy that you found something new in this particular video. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.